Welcome back to Check Out the Stat by your girl, Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby. So today we're talking about Juju Watkins' crazy USC game. And we're going to discuss guys painting their nails. Yes, y'all, today it's a whole topic, but stay tuned. But first, I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. With Underdog, you can earn money by making picks on your favorite players. You can try the app in California, Florida, Texas, and New York, and the list goes on. If you want to play along, go download Underdog Fantasy. Use code STAT. They'll match your deposit up to $100, and you'll get a special pick. Today, our Superwoman of the Week is Juju Watkins. Juju is a freshman at the University of Southern California. Gotta say, Callie, because when I say USC, people automatically think that you're talking about South Carolina. But no, she's from SoCal. She had a historic 51-point night versus Stanford. This was back in early February, but I think it's never too late to recognize greatness. She had a crazy game. Now, what makes this game so special is that USC beat Stanford 67 to 58. That means Juju was only two three-pointers away from having more points scored than the entire other team. Mind you, her team alone only scored 67 points. Let me not say only. They scored 67 points, which is a hell of a game. She scored 51 points, 11 rebounds, and two assists. She had already scored 25 points by halftime. And this was at Stanford Stadium. This wasn't even on home ground. But here's the thing. The streets have already heard about Juju, but I'm going to make sure I put y'all on. She went to Sierra Canyon High. Sierra Canyon is known for having pretty successful alumni. They're not all sports players, but they had Bronny James, Bryce James, Armari Bailey, who is now in the league, Kylie and Kendall Jenner, and Willow Smith all went to the same school as her. There's obviously a lot more players and people, but that's just some of the names. Back in high school, as a high schooler, her senior year, she dropped a 60 piece. So she's been putting her name on the map and it's dope to see her success translating to college. So it wasn't just a one time thing. She's been playing hard and going hard. So at only 18 years old, Juju was on the cover of Slam Magazine's February edition and she signed by Clutch Sports. At six foot two as a freshman in college, the offers are only going to continue coming. And when it's time, she will be the perfect WNBA prospect. Promise y'all this is not the first time you guys are going to hear about Juju Watkins. This is only the beginning. So with that, we're going to go to break and we'll come back with our special interview with a special guest. She called this thing about was toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free He's an actor, writer, poet, model, and creative director. He blew up on the social media app Vine, and the internet has been glued to his vibe ever since. Demetrius is the founder of the You Matter brand. A Detroit native, he is a huge Lions fan. Introducing Demetrius Harmon. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's always funny when I like join in a podcast and I I, I gotta listen to my direction. Why? Like, yeah, you just shit. sitting there like, yep, that's me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought you said it. I was like, yeah, okay. And he's like, huge. I was like, lines spin. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't minimize yourself. It might just feel awkward to you because it's you, but hey, that's what you do. So salute to you. Keep killing it. Now we got you, you here. Of Thank course. So I'm not even going to ease into anything. We're just going to get straight into the topics. Usually I give a little filler. Bump that. We're getting straight to it. Okay. So you're. Yeah, you can. I don't. You know, I, I keep it clean. You know, very friendly. Okay, say good, whatever good, you good. need to say. Say however you need to feel. You are not censored on this show. You want the real deal. That was low key a bar. <laughs> but you ready? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. It's, they're wearing they're, they're, they're wearing off on you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. So you are no stranger to going viral. But now you're going viral for something that has seemed to upset a lot of people, right? So you just yeah. posted a video about you saying that you painted your nails, right? Were you expecting the reaction that you got? Right now that video is at 25 million views. Was that even something no. you expected? No, not at all. I was just really, I'll be honest with you, TikTok just started paying niggas. And I was like, man, listen, hey. <laughs> <laughs> even when I ain't got no content, I got to rub this content out. Right. I see the comment. I, I see comments consistently, like randomly, because like she'd be going viral on TikTok very easily. Right. But like I randomly consistently see a TikTok, like a comment of, uh, oh, why you paint your nails? And I'm like, yeah. fuck it, let me just. You know what I mean? So you made I a video. I put the camera up, said some, put it on, put it on Twitter so I can get people to my TikTok. Yeah. So I can get like, the cheese movement. You feel me? Yeah, I feel and you. <laughs> came back maybe like two hours later, and that bitch had like four K quote tweets, not yeah. likes, quote tweets. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, then on my for you page, I seen like the Discord, so I'm like, oh, it went in a horrible direction. Yeah. So you feel like the reactions were more negative than positive? I don't know. I ain't really look. I ain't really like you feel me like anything I responded to wasn't really um like me searching through them. Right. It was just I'm on my for you page and I see like a comment and I'm like, all right, let me respond to this. Right. But I, I mean like it's 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 discourse, so it's always gonna be I like my I have a belief that it's if there's bad, there's gonna be somebody arguing the good. You right. You know what I mean? So it's it probably is way more people like y'all tweaking out. This is not really that big of a deal. Yeah. But if it's so the negativity usually get more attention than the positivity. Right. Of course. So like bottom of the line is right now, you don't even feel like it's that big of a deal. You just posted a video responding. It went viral and it's like, okay, now we're here, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I never cared about this shit. It was just like, once it started going in a direction where uh, it was like starting to get really homophobic. Yeah. I'm like, y'all getting a little dangerous. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's when I like stepped in and was like speaking and used my platform to uh, be a voice. But Right. Other than that, niggas not stopping no show. You right. Feel me? Like, and then y'all really helping. You know what I mean? I got the Twitter <laughs> monetization too. You feel me? So, <laughs> let's keep it moving. Keep talking, please. You know what I mean? But right. It wasn't for that intention. It just right. went in that direction. But I don't know what the fuck right. made me just feel like uh, this is the topic that they got to rest their head on. Right. So at the end of the day, it was really you getting mad. I'm getting rid because you said everything's yeah, monetized. Oh, so <laughs> and it's crazy too. In the in the in the uh in the video, I'm like, niggas be mad. The first thing I said was, I was like, niggas be mad about this. And then niggas got mad about this. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yes. Yeah, right. So let me see your nails now. Do you usually paint your nails? Was that a first time thing? So you usually get them done. Okay, because sometimes people are like clear coat only, black. You just change it up. So how how does that process work? Do you go to a nail salon? Do you have a nail tech? You paint, paint them yourself, like. What, yeah, what it, it really just depends because, like, with the way it started, um, my homegirl, like, do nails. Mm -hmm. But as dudes start doing their nails more, she's like, I don't have any example to show for dudes doing their nails. Nobody right. really comfortable doing it. I'm dying my hair. I'm, you know what I mean? So right. it's like, I'm going to hit him. So she hit me, and she's like, yeah, like, do it. And I'm like, I don't want my whole nails done. So right. she just put, like, a little Detroit English D on my shit. And then to show, like, her ability to be able to do designs very intricate designs she did the red wings logo which got so many little small uh intricacies in it mm -hmm. and then i posted those and then but when i came back i'm like all right we're gonna do more this is crazy <laughs> you, this, yeah. you feel me like because i got tattoos and all that other stuff and i'm like you know what i mean just in general being artsy i never really thought much of it um never like made it my identity i don't want to be the nail polish right that's not my that's not my goal I'm right like, but um yeah, once I started doing that, it was easy. Like, you know what I mean? I do it for more so, like, occasions. You know what I mean? Whether it may be Christmas or maybe it may be, like, Valentine's Day, my birthday, things like that. But other than that, it's, right. if it's a clear code, it's a clear code. Right. You know what I mean? Got you. Okay, so my opinion on the nail thing, I personally don't care. We argue about this on the show all the time because Drake, Lil Yachty, Harry Styles, ASAP Rocky, those are all fly guys. They all have got their nails painted. So I'm just like, I don't understand why people get... So frustrated. So do you feel like with this topic, people pick and choose when they get upset? Or do you feel like it's just a commotion out of nowhere? Like, why do you think, like, I just don't understand. Why do you think people get so upset? And then, like, do you feel like know. it's coming I, more towards you or just everybody in general who does it? 
No, it's definitely not just me because, like, I ain't even, like, both the homies. So, like, I'd have definitely seen the hate towards him, but that'd be hate misguided in whatever right. regard. It'd be like, I don't like his album and he painted his nail. Right. You know what I mean? If it's Drake, it's like he'd be hanging out with a little boat too much. You feel yeah. me? Like, it'd be whatever it may be, but like, it definitely is in the black community more. Like, I, I was on a podcast earlier mm-hmm. and I was speaking to that. Um, but it's just all about like masculinity and how we view masculinity and like being a big part of our identity and right. things like that. But I don't know. It's weird. It's honestly yeah. so weird. Like, I was raised to not give a fuck about what another yeah. nigga doing as long as nobody. Right. So that's also why I want to bring you on the show because everybody just has these crazy reactions and thinks that like, if you do this, this means this. And if you do that, and it's like, it doesn't mean anything. If you want to paint your nails, you paint your nails. Who cares? But like a lot of people feel very strongly about that. So I was like, okay. So one of my questions to you, right? Are you considered Gen Z? I have to ask this because everybody thinks that we're just super susceptible to change. But what what are you? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. The, <laughs> I'm born in '98, okay. so I don't know what what the the cutoff is. Right, you might be Gen X. I, I, have, I really have no idea. <laughs> but like, I, I I guess if you own social media in general, you you're using it right, right, then you might be susceptible to accepting people. But I don't think that's a bad thing. Right. Okay. And then this is probably my little last question about the nail thing because we're going to go to other topics. So (laughs) I got (laughs) to talk about the quote that you put, right? You said that people were saying that you're not a real man. And your response, you said this is from the same men who are splitting bills, not providing for nobody but themselves, and not even taking care of their mom, right? You just said, look, this is the one thing I'm going to say. Y'all can leave me alone. And that's that. Was that to anyone in particular? Or were you just talking to the world? Like it was more. It was like talking to the world because it's like, bro, like y'all niggas not even handling the main thing. Like if, if we being on the standard of generals, you know what I mean? Like you not providing for nobody, you not protecting nobody. Like I'm doing all those things, and the only thing I'm doing that you think make me not a real man is paying my nails. Right. And everybody in my life that like it's little kids that look up to me, like my nephew, my little brother. You feel me? Like. And they taken care of. Right. They they look up to me. They they view me as a real man. So you as a nigga on Twitter that got an AI profile, I promise you not really changing nothing. You know what I mean? Right. But since we having this dialogue, it's a lot of things I feel like you probably need to be working on in your real life. <laughs> you know I mean? And like right. that's just me trying to be as uh work around the way of calling right. niggas like you feel me broke or dead beast or whatever it may right. be. But it's like, it's a lot of things that niggas do in real life versus this Twitter shit of like calling out somebody that they feel like they can like get their little uh, interactions off of right. and gratification from, you feel me? Got you. Okay, so I know you make a lot of content, but for the people watching, what is your content usually centered around and like, what is your main, that main thing? It's stupid. Okay. It's stupid. It's it's whatever the 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 moment may bring. It might be like, like we used to make skits. I used to make skits, so it might have been like in relation to not making fun of the Bible, but mm-hmm. just reenacting the Bible. Uh, as of recently, because football season is a thing, and like I sports, I sport gamble. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, lions, you know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I, can't, I can't eat sugarcoat it no more. It's lions, you know what I mean? Like. I'll probably say two, three years ago, it was like, don't bet on the Lions to lose, but don't bet on them to win because right. you never know what you're going to go in. This past year, I want to say I bet on the Lions to win every year. Every, every, I, mean, I bet on the Lions to win every week. And when they didn't win, I didn't feel bad because they should have won. You <laughs> feel me? Yeah. It made sense. Right. They were just there. So, yeah, let's talk about the Lions. I think you are literally the Lions' number one fan, maybe besides Eminem, because you have given consistently talked about that team. Do you think next year, next season, that they can take it all the way? Are you still rooting for them? Or are you are you a delusional fan too? <laughs> I think I think it's delusion for me to root for the Lions my entire life. Okay. I think the, I think the delusion is already worn off. We didn't fucked around and got like we didn't make niggas retire in a prom. You right. know what I mean? Like, but this year was different. Seriously. This year was crazy. Like I don't, I I can't explain to anybody that wasn't in four field. And get that feeling, but even when I went, I think it was a uh, probably like the game before Thanksgiving. We went against the Bears. Mm-hmm. We was down like two scores. Came down, got a touchdown. I think we caused a fumble. 
Mm-hmm. Got another touchdown, then got a safety. What the fuck is happening here? You know what I mean? Right. Like, we was never supposed to make it right to the playoffs, to the NFC Championship. When we got there, it's frustration. Of course, it's like, bro, like you don't gotta go for it on fourth every time. Right, just kick it. Like I'm watching the game, like, bro, please kick the ball. But that's what got us there. But we easily are still in a rebuild. You feel? Yeah. Me? So. I definitely think we can make the Super Bowl. I definitely think we're supposed to make the Super Bowl. I think we right. were the best playoff team yeah. consistently sure. out of these playoffs. You know what I mean? We ain't got no Lamar Jackson. We right. ain't got no Patrick Mahomes. No, like, shot at Jared Goff because he gets the job done. But <laughs> yeah. every every Reality. playoff game, every 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 championship the city of Detroit and won been through, like, yeah, we're just beating the fuck out of my right. court. You feel me? Or we're just... It's a but it's five dudes, it's Ben Wallace, it's Chauncey Billups, and they just making it work. You know what I mean? So right. we wouldn't even want it to happen in a way of like we got the superstar that we can blame it on. It always is the full team effort that make us right. champions. That makes sense. So when the Lions lost to the 49ers, you weren't even shocked. You were kind of like, oh, well, I, was shocked as well. <laughs> I was I was hey, look, we did a push up, we did push-ups every time we got a touchdown. Okay. I want to say we did like so the first one you feel me do seven. The second one you do 14, 21, 27. We up. Uh, we not even thinking about it. I'd order more bottles. I'd order more tequila. <laughs> right. Through Uber Eats. Right. The Uber Eats do it outside. We smoke it. We pass them in the blood. It's fine. We he like, I hope y'all win. Right. I'm like, I hope we win too. Man, when that second half started. <laughs> when that second half started, I saw Brenda, you catch that touchdown off of a helmet. I was like, all right, bro, this is. <laughs> This actually makes no sense because we good. We got a really I right. don't want to say we're like top three run defense. So I was never worried about Christian McCaffrey. Right. I would much rather would have had Brock Purdy than Jordan Love because Jordan Love let us up on Thanksgiving. Yeah. The whole <laughs> thing was just perfect. It was a match made in heaven. Right. And then we beat the Chiefs on the first game of the year. Right. So I'm like, we're good, bro. If it just work how it work and it right. It didn't, and that broke me. It, it broke my heart more <laughs> that we lost in the in the championship, right? A game away from the Super Bowl than if we would have never made it. Because right. I, at the beginning of the year, I had no expectations of us even making it. Right. Like I, I fuck around and didn't buy a ticket to uh the game to go to the bay because I'm like I'm just use my buddy to go to the Super Bowl. That's where we're going. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna pull up like five pair of buffs. It's a fit and all. I was gonna be out there, yeah, tweaking, yeah, and that just isn't what happened, and it broke my heart. Yeah, and I'm not even gonna lie. I feel bad for Lions fans because you guys were at such a high just for it to be knocked down. But everybody was saying that the Lions and the Ravens didn't even need to be at the Super Bowl to begin with. People just said it would have been too much. I still think the city would have been lit. It would have but... been a nigga mode. <laughs> like... It would have been a nigga mode for sure. It would have been crazy. Baltimore and Detroit. <laughs> it would have been disgusting. Right. It would have been disgusting. It would have evacuate the building. <laughs> Are you serious? What? Right. And that was the most, like, it wasn't boring. It wasn't boring Super Bowl. Like, from a football standpoint, it was like defense showed up. Right. You know what I mean? But it would have been a shootout. Yeah. I just think it would have been interesting to see. Yeah. It was like, maybe this about like 38. Right. You know what I mean? We got a little thing to show for it, but yeah. mm -hmm, we'll be back. But like I said, we ain't got we'll no, back. we ain't got no. We'll that's what back. we're all saying. Every team that lost in the play, that's what we're all saying. We'll be back next year. So. I don't Wait, know. What's your team? Steelers. Who are you from? I'm from Steelers? Tampa, but I'm a Steelers fan. I've been a Steelers yes, fan. Ma'am. All right, relax, because that's what we said about y'all. <laughs> so anything is possible. I'm just saying, y'all, not talking about my team, and your team even make it to the Super Bowl. Y'all problem starts at the quarterback. It y'all does. We are also oh. rebuilding a lot, too. But the fact that we even made it to the playoffs when we had no tools and we went through three quarterback swaps is crazy. So you know we'll be crazy. back. That's my turn. We'll be back. I, I want to talk crazy, but uh, I was on a flight, and I think I was going against the Jaguars. This was a game uh, Trevor Lawrence got injured. I had a nigga foot down for yeah. a touchdown. I had Matt Fryer moved down for a touchdown. Both of them niggas got a touchdown. I woke up to cheese. I have never been so happy to <laughs> bet on the Steelers in my entire life. That's what everybody said. I was like... <laughs> Man, I followed Pat Fryer move off of that. I, was yeah. like, I know you don't even give a fuck who I am. Yeah. I just want you to know that I appreciate <laughs> My said, goodness. I appreciate yeah, your I service. Right. Being a Steelers fan is crazy. It's so is being a Lions fan. Hey, welcome to the club. <laughs> That's how it feels. You know how it feels. 
So, I don't. Y'all got, y'all, got, y'all, got, y'all, got, y'all have history. We have history of pain. <laughs> And recently, recently we felt pain too. But like I said, and like you said, we'll be back. All we can do is you know what sucks. What I'm a uh, like you know how you have your hometown Mm -hmm. team, then you got team you choose by choice. Yeah, my other team is the Bills. That's also that's not a bad team though at all. Like I'm not even upset with that. Like you're in a good pool. I didn't pick them niggas off of even knowing they was good. I just was in New York. I went to a wing bar. The Buffalo Bills fans was nice. I was like, this is a great place. You said, <laughs> said, I like it here. <laughs> and then both of them teams lost from just like, see, what the fuck are y'all doing? See? <laughs> and that's how it goes. I love football because it's always unpredictable, but that's just how it is. So granted, obviously, I know you're a Lions fan. And then obviously y'all lost to the 49ers. Did you take it too personal where you didn't watch the Super Bowl or did you watch it? I fell asleep on it. I, I fell asleep on for show. Them niggas was taking their time with it. They what were. Are you doing, bro? They were. You know what I mean? Like, let's get it over with. Right. I watched Usher. Okay. I watched Usher. That's what I want to discuss, right? There's a lot of conversation right now around I Usher and Swiss. Alicia Keys. Did you think it wasn't that big of a deal? <laughs> or do you would you have cared if you were Swiss Beats? I think like. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, when he first did it, I was like, he threw you the fuck out. Okay. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Everybody got different standards for their relationship. You do whatever the fuck you want to do. I don't know. You know what I mean? It'd be people that's married to actors that they acting wife be fucking people on camera. Yeah. I, don't, I have no idea yeah. what anybody should accept. Me, couldn't tell you what I could do. But <laughs> shit was crazy when I see that. I said, he grabbed that hip. Yeah. That thing, that thing. This is crazy. He's tweaking out. This isn't even, I could tell it wasn't scripted. I could tell right, it wasn't. Scripted. The music moved you in this direction. Yes. This is crazy. Yes. But yeah, that was it. I think everybody got a fair <laughs> analysis of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. After the fact, it's just a lot of people had a lot to say. So I was like, what is your opinion on it? Because I think men and women have different opinions on it, even though I think the general consensus is that it was a little bit much. But also was, at the end yeah. of the day, people it's say it's them. it's art. <laughs> it's, it can be. It can be. If if Swiss Beast was like, yeah, straight, then I I have my opinion on me shit. Yeah. But if I was Swiss Beats, <laughs> you just don't know how you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel I, you. I like, bro, it's straight. You already got the song. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's cool. You ain't gotta do that. <laughs> so you got the song. That's the all you got. Me, you in the direction of my wife. Yeah. That also, like, you know what I mean? Took me from my other wife. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know what she okay with. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I feel you. And then before we close, right, I want to talk about your brand, You Matter. What was the purpose behind creating it? I see the hoodie sweatshirt. Yeah, this was, this was, this was, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I'm just a a black boy from Detroit and like fucking my parents are like from the 60s, 70s, you know what I mean? So like they all understanding of uh, mental issues and things like that wasn't really the best. Mm-hmm. And I'm the youngest. I'm the only child of my father. So a lot of pressure just being the youngest as well. There's a lot of pressure because I've seen niggas fuck up and I'm the last hope, you know what I mean? And it was just hard. And I didn't have like a space to talk to people. And I was online. I was like, cause social media came out. Not came out, but I was on Tumblr. I was on Instagram. Yeah. Boom, boom. And I was like, oh yeah, y'all fuck with me. I talked to y'all, writing poems. Yeah, they ought to been a lot more open. And that that parent, that black parent thing that they do is my mom found my Tumblr, she found my Facebook, boom, yeah. boom. And she's like, I can't believe you feel this way. And I'm like, I can't believe you made me feel this way. And okay. um I was already on like social I was already like doing clothing. I did clothing since I was 13, so like seventh grade. So it was always like a medium. And I want to say, like, in when I was like 18, like ninth, 12th grade, I was about to say I was 18 in 9th grade. That was going to be crazy. But when I was in 12th grade, I um, was just struggling a lot because I knew I wasn't going to college. Mm. Yada, yada. And like, there was pressure from my dad because he didn't graduate from high school. He like, nigga, I had you so you can do the things I didn't do. You going to college. Right. I'm like, nigga, I, <laughs> I'm fucking around struggling in free school. Yeah. I don't think I want to make you pay for this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I made it You Matter like hoodies like for myself and just the homies was, I was already online, I was already making skits, I already had like a following. 
So people would see me wear it and like, where you trading from? I'm like, I made it, boom, boom. And then they wanted me to sell it. So then I sold it. It just took off way further than I thought it would. Yeah. And now we like, now it's just like a, a, it's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? There's the, of course, like the business side of things, but um, every like moment or day that I wake up, it's me having a responsibility that's bigger than myself. Like I yeah. didn't pop up in the <clears throat> And I like I get tagged in things like when people pass away or like if they fall victim to suicide or like things like that. And I always repost or I try to donate to like the GoFundMe for like the funerals and things like that. But I remember a specific guy and uh I did a pop up in New York and like these two older parents, strange as hell to me. Not strange, but it was just like, oh, like this is not the target audience I thought I would see here. Mm-hmm. And they just approached me. They gave me like a wristband and they was talking to me like, yeah, like my son. They was telling me his name. Yeah, like, they showed me a picture. I'm like, I remember him. And like, yeah, like he loved your hoodies. Like we right. cremated him in your hoodie. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like to make that type of impact is while also being a member of the community that you're serving is yeah. always like beyond me. Yeah. Well, that's super dope. And you obviously have a big following. Everybody loves what you do. And I think you're inspiring a lot of people because even just the way that you like post your thoughts and like people can just have an open discussion to you about just random things. Like that's also special too, because I feel like a lot of people nowadays, especially on social media, feel like they can't connect to people. So it's like by you just being you, you're encouraging, you know, positively impacting people. And that's super, super dope. So keep doing what you're doing. It might not seem a lot to you, like, right off the forefront. You're like, I'm just being me. But, like, you genuinely are influencing a lot of people. And I can see based off of the reactions, the comments, the people interacting with you. So that's super, super dope to see. And you're making people laugh while you do it. So that's a rare trait to have. Keep doing it. You know, I support you. I think it's dope. So last thing, of course, last thing I do want to discuss. I know you have, like, the satin hoodies. I think that's super cool as well. That's what you have on. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you like, can explain like, it better than me so people can see. Uh, Yeah, we just made a sad hoodies like a while ago. I want to say we did it maybe 2019, mm-hmm. Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, like, for hair, you know what I mean? Like, because people wear our hoodies, like, wear the hoodies in general, like, and they fall asleep. I know I do. Like, these motherfuckers is comfortable. <laughs> and not even from like a selling standpoint, but just like, you feel me, a long day, you come home, you put the hoodie on, you go to sleep. And so like, <clears throat> you got waves, you got an afro, yada, yada, you wake up, your shit a little matted. Yeah. You just not take care of your shit. You, <laughs> awesome. you feel yeah. me, have a little bonnet in your favorite hoodie. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, that was always the goal and idea behind it. But then uh, I want to say the first year we did it, we did... We did um, black business grants. Mm-hmm. So, like, I just had people, like, submit um, their business. And it's like, it, it ain't really no criteria. Of, like, mm-hmm. you got to have this amount of customers or it got to be worthy to me. We just went through them and was like, all right, here's 10K. You know what I mean? You could be a, a YouTuber and you need another, a new camera and lighting system. You know what I mean? Like, who's to say that you're not worthy of that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, trying to, like, give back to that community, but specifically, like, the, the black community. You know what I mean? That was where it started. And even now, you know what I mean? When we were dealing with the riots, when we were dealing with like a lot of people going to jail from the riots, it was like, we got maybe 300 sad and black human matter hoodies. Like we just going to give them out. And we also going to donate to the the jail funds. You right. know what I mean? Things like that. So just trying to like, um, it's very obvious it's a black owned brand, but it's like, there's black owned brands that don't support black people. Yeah. And like, trying to let people know like no this is this is some shift that's for us you yeah know what i mean by us and for us okay so my last hey, yeah my on. last question my show is all about women empowerment is there any particular woman that you want to shout out that you feel like is killing it in their industry or just doing a good job that you just want to give a shout out to i feel like this doesn't count i have two i'm gonna say my mom <laughs> okay. just because like she like watching shit and she'd be like, I don't even know if you if you value me. But I I, I honestly would say, Stat, you're doing a good job. You're doing a great Everybody job. Everybody is going to make me cry with that. <laughs> I, think, I, I think you're doing a great job. I think, like I said, you know what I mean? You, you're you a very structural piece to like the things that um you guys do on the podcast of it is what it is. But like even within your own things, you know what I mean? Like 
you got a lot of personality, but it it doesn't it doesn't leak in a way of um, distraction. It doesn't leak in a way of things like that. And I I I, I want to say my favorite thing was seeing like them value you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Of like no, nah, like when we're seeing your interactions of, of Halloween or things like that. You know what I mean. Or I'm chronic, not chronically online, but like I'm a creator as well. So like I'm yeah. in the comments. You know what I mean. But like, is there a thing I didn't peep? from this video i watched that somebody else peeps so they'll put like little time markers but i'll be seeing people like no nah, i fuck with the way stack come with prepare with facts yeah. and her opinion you know what i mean or like them listening to her you know what i mean so i would say you're doing a great job and you add a very like integral part to everything that's going on y'all in oh thanks for me. that was so nice i really really appreciate it um like you said you're a creator too so it's like a lot of pressure but it's also something that i love to do and i'm sure you're doing what you love to do as well so at that point we're winning in life when you're doing something that you love to do. Um, but thank you so much for coming on the show. Where can people follow you? What are your socials so people can see your journey? Uh, you matter.com. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's that. All right. Hey, hey Demetrius Armin on everything. Uh, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. Yeah, if you ask me what kind of content make, it's just stupid shit, man. I just, I'm just a nigga with a camera, dog. I yeah. don't know what else to tell anybody. But um, yeah, I mean, if you need motivation, if you need uh, gym motivation, mental health help, any of those things, you can find those on all of those. Okay, Demetrius, thank you for being here. Make sure you guys check out his socials. He has a lot of cool content. Make sure you guys check out his brand. But that's it for today's episode. Y'all can hashtag check out the stats so we can continue the discussion next week. And maybe your question or take will be featured. Thanks for hanging out with me and checking out the stats. I'll see y'all next week. Uh,